Dot skill presents properties of whole numbers. The set of non-negative integers comprise the set of whole numbers. So the whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. The set of whole numbers have a few properties and that's exactly what we are going to explore in this video. Let's start with the closure property. Closure property of addition and also for multiplication. The closure property of addition tells us that when two whole numbers are added together, for example 3 plus 4, the answer is also a whole number. Similarly, the closure property of multiplication tells us that when two whole numbers are multiplied together, the answer is also a whole number. And that's pretty obvious. Again, we could use that same example of 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And 12 is also a whole number. And it's pretty obvious that this is going to work for every whole number. But we can't say the closer property works for subtraction or even for division. For example, if you did 5 minus 10, that's negative 5. 5 is a whole number, 10 is a whole number, but negative 5 is not a whole number. So that doesn't work. Similarly, for division, if you're dividing 5 with 10, 5 divided by 10 is 1 half. And 1 half is not a whole number. And therefore, we say the closure property works for addition and multiplication. There's something called the associative property. Associative property. And that again works for addition. and multiplication. And it tells us that in an addition or a multiplication sentence, the grouping doesn't really matter. So for example, if you were to do 1 plus 2 plus 3 and put the 2 plus 3 in one group, you could easily rewrite this as 1 plus 2 in one group denoted by the parentheses and add 3 to it. The end result is the same. Similarly for multiplication, if you were to do let's say 3 times 4 times 5, that's exactly the same as 3 times 4 in one group multiplied with 5. That's exactly what the associative property is about. And then there's something called the commutative property commutative property that again works for only addition and multiplication and it tells us that in any addition or multiplication sentence the order doesn't matter. So you could add the numbers 2 and 3 and 4 for example in any order you wish to. 2 plus 3 plus 4 is the same as 3 plus 2 plus 4 and that's the same as 4 plus 2 plus 3 and they all have the same answer. And obviously this isn't the complete list of permutations or the orders in which you could write these numbers down. Similarly for multiplication 2 times 3 times 4 is the same as 3 times 4 times 2 or for that matter, 4 times, 3 times, 2 and so on. So in addition and in multiplication, the order doesn't matter. That's what the commutative property is about. And then there's something called the distributive property. A very useful property when you learn about algebra. The distributive property tells us that if we have a number outside the parentheses and we have another number inside the parentheses and then another one 
and perhaps another one, any number of numbers inside the parentheses that are separated by plus or minus in between them, the value of this expression is always going to be equal to the number outside multiplied with each of the numbers inside with plus or minus in between them, in between the products. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have the number 5 outside and inside we have let's say 3 minus 1 plus 2. So this is equal to 5 times 3 minus 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2. Now if you were to apply bad mass or pain dash on this one, you would work the bracket or the parentheses first. So 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4 and 5 times 4 is 20. So the answer is 20 using bad mass or pain dash. And if we were to evaluate the same expression using the distributive property as over here, let's find out the answer. This is equal to 5 times 3 is 15. So we have a 15 minus 5 times 1 is 5 plus 5 times 2 is 10. 15 minus 5 is 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. It's still the same answer. There's something called the zero property of addition. Zero property of addition. And it's something pretty obvious. It tells us that if we have a number and we add zero to it, the answer is the number itself. You might think this is more of a common sense thing. But yes, it is common sense. But we use this common sense in solving equations and stuff. So you need to know about the property that you are using while solving equations, right? I think we should drop the S. It's called zero property of addition, not additions. Let me just go ahead and erase that off. And there's something similar with multiplication. It's called the zero property. Zero property of multiplication and that tells us that when we multiply a number with zero the answer is not the number unlike addition the answer is always zero pretty obvious again and then we also have something called the multiplicative multiplicative identity property and the property itself is a lot simpler than what its name suggests. It just tells us that when a number is multiplied with 1, the result is the number itself. Anything times 1 is the number itself. That's what the multiplicative identity property is about. And that rounds up our discussion on the properties of whole numbers.